today I'm going to start with something simple, but don't worry, it will escalate to something bigger. You already read it on the title, it's binary expansion. We know that every natural number can be expressed as a sum of different powers of 2. For example, 42 equals 32 plus 8 plus 2. This is called the binary expansion. One way to find it is with a very straightforward approach. First, find the biggest power of 2 that is less or equal than n. Then include that power of 2 in the expansion and subtract it from n. And just repeat that while n is larger than 0. For example, take the number of episodes of One Piece. What's the biggest power of 2 less or equal than 930? That's 512. Now what's the biggest power of 2 less or equal than 418? That's 256. Now the next one will be 128. The next one will be 32. And the last one is 2. Now the sum of these powers of 2 um, will be 930. Something important is that the binary expansion corresponds with the way in which the numbers are expressed in binary. For example, 42 is 2 to the power of 5 plus 2 to the power of 8 plus 2 to the power of 1 and that matches the ones on the binary expression. And 930 equals 2 to the power of 9 plus 2 to the power of 8 plus 2 to the power of 7 plus 2 to the power of 5 plus 2 to the power of 1. And as you can see, if you check the binary expansion from right to left, those ones match with the exponents on the 2's over here. Then a faster way to getting the binary expansion it could be going from bit by bit. First checking if the number is odd or even, then checking the next bit, then the next bit and so on from right to left. Summarizing that could be the algorithm. Also many programming languages have this trick over here. That the smallest power of 2 uh, that divides n can be found by using this thing and in this runs in constant time. The languages with that are C++, Java or C Sharp. This property makes the implementation in C++ even simpler. As you can see, here it is. And here as well. And this could be useful for many things. The most straightforward that I could think about is the binary exponentiation. For example, if we want to know how much is 3 to the power of 42, uh, we don't need to multiply 3 by itself 42 times. Um, because we know that 42 equals 32 plus 8 plus 2. So 3 to the power of 42 is 3 to the power of 32 times 3 to the power of 8 times 3 to the power of 2. We can square 3 multiple times in order to get uh, 3 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 4, 3 to the power of 8, 3 to the power of 16, and 3 to the power of 32. Each time we square the number, it's only a single multiplication. So we raise it up 
a 3 to the power of 32 with only 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 multiplications. Then we know that 3 to the power of 42 is this thing over here and also we already know the values of this. Then after a simple substitution and a couple of multiplications we get the result. 1.09 times 10 to the power of 20. Of course I know that you are here for the algorithms. So here is an implementation in C++. There is a recursive version of this same algorithm that is much easier to deduce and usually it's fast enough. But this iterative approach that I just showed you here, it will result more useful later in this same video. So I keep in this iterative approach in mind. The next topic is the modular Fibonacci. As a quick recap, these are the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci of 0 is 0, Fibonacci 1 is 1, and after that each Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two. So it starts with 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. What we want to do is to find a fast way to compute the, the last few digits of a Fibonacci number. For example, if we want to find the last four digits, six digits of Fibonacci milliard, what could be a good algorithm for that? And there are some ways to compute the Fibonacci with a closed formula. But those ways are very impractical for this. Because it involves division and non-integer numbers. So it gets a lot of issues with precision. We want something that uses only integer numbers and no divisions of numbers that it could have hundreds of digits because Fibonacci numbers can have hundreds of digits. They grow very, very quickly. For finding a good algorithm, we will reformulate this problem in a different way. First, consider this graph over here. Suppose that we start on the node A and now in the same style we did with Bellman Ford in the previous video, let's count the number of paths to reach each node with zero steps, one step, two steps, and so on. The way to compute that is starting with zero steps, then there is only one path to reach the node A and there are no paths to reach the node B because A is a starting node. With one step from A it can only go here or here. So it's one way to get to A and another way to get to B. With two steps it can reach A from A itself or from B, so um, we just sum the two numbers over here. And to get B with two steps, it will need to get to A with one step, so uh, we just copy this one from here to here. Then with three steps, uh, again uh, we check how many paths are with two steps getting to A and getting to B. We add those two together and we get this three over here. And for B, it can only come from A, so and we just copy the value from here. 
in general for computing the number of paths to get to a certain node with certain number of steps we just check which other nodes are pointing to that one and uh, we sum the number of paths with one step less in that way we will check all the possibilities but going back to the point repeating this process until uh, we get to here I think you should have already seen the pattern these ones are the Fibonacci numbers and it's now strange because for filling these uh, numbers we are adding the, these two together and these ones are just a copy of the numbers over here but shifted one position downward now we can reframe the problem of finding Fibonacci of n to find the number of paths from node a to node a with exactly n steps and remember that we want to be able to choose a very big value for n like a milliard so we can't just compute n steps one by one an advantage of reframing this problem as counting paths is that we have a lot of counting properties more grounded in our intuition instead of just dealing with some recurrences and algebraic jargon we can rely more on problem solving strategies that we could use for graphs or combinatorics our key observation to count the path it's in order to take 2k steps we need to take k steps twice so we can take k steps from a to b and then k steps from b to a or we can start in a after k steps reach a and after another k steps reach a again so um, uh, as you can see in order to get from a to a we can pass through these two different nodes in the middle and now in order to um, work with this in a more grounded way let's define a function and this function p it is the number of paths from a node u to a node v with exactly k steps so with the previous reasoning uh, we have that p of 2k from a to a it's basically p of k from a to a times p of k from a to a plus p of k from a to b times p of k of b to a if you are struggling to get what this formula is or why it is true uh, feel free to pause the video or to check my explanation again before continuing because in the next equation will use this and it will get more complicated using a similar reasoning it's possible to deduce and these other three equations from going f uh, from a to b from b ending in a or starting on b and ending on b in all cases we need to start in the node pass through an intermediate node in the middle and then get to the final node 
These four equations combined are very powerful because if we know the value of p with k steps, we can compute the value of p with 2k steps only with 8 multiplications. So for example, if we know the value of k with a thousand steps, then we don't need to compute a thousand Fibonacci numbers to know how it could look after another 1000 steps. The idea for solving this problem will be calculate the value of p with one step, with two steps, with four steps, eight steps, and so on. And then we could use the binary expansion to know any Fibonacci numbers. So for the first step, let's uh, define a matrix. This function for each integer, uh, we get the values of p on a different power of 2. We aim to compute this using dynamic programming. Uh, from this, for property that we deduced before, we can get these recurrences over here. And these recurrences allow us to compute the values of f using dynamic programming. And if we only want to know the last six digits, we could just add this thing over here. The base case of this recurrence will be basically the adjacency matrix of the graph. Some of you may be thinking that this thing over here looks very very similar, in fact identical to matrix multiplication. Actually, this is multiplying a matrix by, by itself. And yeah, that's totally right. However, I want you to stay in the dynamic programming point of view. Because this math mindset of computing a table using power of two is very useful for many other problems that we will be checking out in this video as well. If we compute all the values of f up to 31, then we could compute fit for any power of 2 that fits in a 32-bit input. We said before the goal is first to compute the value for the power of 2 and then extend it for all the other numbers. We already know how to achieve the, the first step. But now going back to the graph, if we know the number of ways to reach A with N steps and the number of ways to reach B with N steps, then we could advance 2k steps with this simple algorithm. This algorithm takes the number of paths to reach the node A and the number of paths to reach the node B with n steps and returns the number of paths to reach a and to reach B with n plus 2 to the power of k steps. And if we are computing the last 6 digits instead of the whole numbers, then it's enough to just add this thing. Now knowing how to advance any power of 2 uh, steps, we call you the same idea of the binary exponentiation algorithm that uh, we discussed before um, to compute the Fibonacci number this time. 
as you can see, it's the same idea than binary exponentiation. Going from the right to left, checking which bits are power down, and then advancing the corresponding number of steps. Something important to notice is that if we use a different graph than the one that is here, but we still count the paths in the same way, using dynamic programming and grouping on powers of 2 and with the binary expansion, all of this, we could compute a big variety of functions depending on the graph we choose. For example, we could compute the uh, first column of any row of the Pascal triangle. This graph over here corresponds to the Pascal triangle, at least the first uh, five columns. And using this you could compute any row very fast, without needing to compute all of the previous rows. Originally I was planning to include all these things over there in this same video, like one way of showing you very different ways of applying the same idea, and how nice can be that, but now after checking that I have already half an hour of recording, I think it could be a video too long, so I will leave that for the next time.